This last year, the no-fault car insurance law changed. Now, the questions are, how did the law change? Why are the rates still high? And is it better not to report an accident than to report it? Joining us now are Chet Fossey and John Gismondi, both trial lawyers. And no-fault is an interesting term, isn't it? It certainly is. It is a uh, term that uh, is basically correct as they tried to use it. Uh, the big problem is that uh, it became a first party problem. Um, it also became a problem because of the way they started it. They thought that they could get something for nothing. And you can't. You can't take a uh, policy of insurance under the old scheme, which used to provide something like $250 for med pay, and suddenly say, we're going to pay every single thing that comes down. The costs just escalated tremendously. The medical bills, the uh, lost wages, became a real burden and a real problem. It's kind of like opening the door a crack and the whole lake runs in, right? Is it that, that kind of a thing, John? Jack, I think what happened, I agree with Chet, I think it was a free ride for a lot of people, and I think the easiest way probably for the consumer to understand what the old law was and why it was so expensive and why we're hoping to change now is that it was like the consumer walking in to buy a car and the salesman telling the consumer the only car we have is one that's loaded with all sorts of options which are very nice but they may be options that you don't really need and they're things that cost you money and I think now what the new law is trying to do is cut away a lot of the optional equipment and pare it down to what people really are interested in and therefore make it less expensive. But you know, one of the hazards in this situation now is we've all been used to buying insurance that covered everything, we didn't have to worry about it, right? But now we have to make some judgments and some decisions about how much uh, medical insurance to ha have, uh, how much liability insurance, and a lot of people are going to get caught unawares by this. Well, they've had to make that decision for years, Jack. Uh, it only changed in one aspect, and that was the first party, as they call it. Uh, that is a claim made by the person who buys the insurance. Uh, traditionally, car insurance has been uh, a situation where you wanted to protect yourself uh, if somebody got hurt and wanted to sue you. That whole concept has changed. Now you want to protect yourself for example, in the situation with an uninsured motorist claim. You want to protect yourself from somebody out there who's driving around in a car that doesn't have insurance. And you want to cover yourself with enough insurance on yourself so that you have a first party claim against your carrier if the other person can't pay all your bills. No fault was like that. It's a first party claim against your own carrier. That still exists. It just has some limits on it. But if it's supposed to be a more efficient system, why are rates still high, John? Well, Jack, I don't, I don't think we can really say yet that the rates are going to be much higher. You know, the, the new law has only been in effect for a few months. And I think, again, you're right that people have to make more choices now than they did under the old law. But again, I analogize to the loaded car. If you went into the showroom and all the salesman had for you was a car loaded with every piece of optional equipment that you may or may not want, I think the consumers at a disadvantage. They would prefer to come in and only buy what they think they really need. So yes, they have to make choices, but it may end up being more economical. Have to make a decision. And again, we have raised some questions now, and you can get answers by calling 243-6000. And if you can't get through now, call any time between now and after the 11 o'clock news tonight.